Hello, my name is Debbie and I'm the Alwyn Gator Stitcher. Today is Thursday, January 14th, 2021, and welcome to my first floss tube. I'm so excited that you've taken some time to watch this video today and stop by and say hello. I have been an avid stitcher for over 30 years. I first started in Girl Scouts, probably eight or nine years old. I learned to stitch and did continue it for a couple of years. However, when I hit high school, life got busy. I put it down and thought, okay, this was a craft I did as a child and I'm not gonna come back to it. However, when I was in college, a good friend of mine was a stitcher as well. She reignited my passion for this craft and I've never looked back since then. I have been stitching continuously for 30 years and I always have had a project going during that time. I used to be a monogamous, monogamous stitcher, which means that I worked on one project at a time. I can think of once or twice where I had a, a project going, I put it down to work on something else that would be a gift, such as a wedding sampler. I would finish that and then I would return back to my new project. I loved working that way. However, a couple of years ago, I was poking around on the internet and I discovered floss tube and it opened my eyes to so many different ways of stitching and different types of stitching. And so I've made a, I made a decision when I finished my last big project in 2019 that I would work on multiple projects at the same time. I've realized that I am much more of a process stitcher than a completion stitcher. Often when I finished my projects, I would frame them and give them away as gifts. And many times that represented a couple of years of labor because they were large full coverage pieces. And I was okay with that. Um, to me, it was, you know, giving the gift obviously was really important, but also just having, um, you know, the process of getting that project to completion was the reward, not so much seeing it on my wall. Um, so I made a decision in 2020 that I was going to join a lot of the challenge groups on Facebook and I was just going to have fun with this craft and stop worrying about getting things done and more focusing on the joy of stitching and spending more time stitching. I think one of the issues I have with being a monogamous stitcher, if I would get to a project and it would start to get frustrating or boring or something, I would put it down for a couple of weeks before I'd pick it back up again. And now if I run that, run into that with one of my projects, I can just move on to the next one. And so I'm really excited to have this opportunity. Also in 2020, um, I made the decision to retire from my career. I had been a foreign service officer, first with the Agency of International Development. I took a, a break from that and then joined the U.S. Department of State. Um, and I worked for them for about 16 years. I loved my career. It was a great opportunity um, to travel the world and visit, lot, visit and live in lots of different places. Um, but it got uh, moving around every two to three years. It gets tiring after a while. And my husband and I decided that it was time to uh, locate ourselves in one place. So currently I'm in Gainesville, Florida. Um, I grew up in this town. I left when I was in high school. Um, with my family. Um, my parents moved back um, about 10 years later. At that point I was already working and I didn't move back with them, um, but Gainesville is a lovely town and I'm very happy that my husband and I have decided to make this our retirement home. Uh, just a little bit about my name as well. Um, when I first started watching Floss Tube, there seemed to be a lot of people named Debbie or Deborah on, in the Floss Tube world. And so I wanted to come up with a name that no one would really have to remember my name because if they if somehow it was said out loud, like there could be 10 other people who would have that exact same name. So I picked Owl and Gator Stitcher. I went to a small college outside of Philadelphia. Our mascot was the owl. And so I, that is something that has part of been a little bit of, I wouldn't say my identity, but it's just something that I think is a good symbol of me. And um, I also do love owls. I find them to be fascinating birds. And so that's why I, I chose owl. And also, um, Gator because I grew up in Gainesville, Florida, and uh, it's the University of Florida, and the Gators are the mascot. And if anyone has grown up in a college town, that the university tends to be the, 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 the focus. Even if you're not a sports fan, you, you sort of adopt that as your, you know, part of your identity because it's just so much of the culture of the town. So that's why I became Owl and Gator Stitcher. Um, I do find alligators fascinating. Um, not in love with them, um, but I think they are very interesting creatures as well. And so that's why I did adopt the name Owl and Gator Stitcher. Um, as I mentioned, I've joined a lot of challenge groups on Facebook. I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, showing some of my stitching. Um, but before I do, just uh, I think uh, many of you already know the challenge groups, but uh, Whipgo, um, Whipgo Semi-Sane Stitchers, Letter of the Month, 
the ma monthly magazine cross stitch challenge, I think is the official name, um, as well as Crystal Academy and a few others. And so I'm gonna show you some of my stitching right now and I'll talk about some of those groups as I go along. So I would say my first piece that I work on, and this is one of the few pieces that I very rarely use for a challenge group, it is, um, it's Old World Map. Um, it's an artisy, it's an artisy pattern. It's a, uh, it's an artisy pattern. Here is uh, the cover. Um, it's, it's a, it's, as you can get, just see, it's a map of the world um, with various figures around the corners. This was, this is my oldest project. It is something I started in late 2019 after I finished my last big project. I mean, I would say, I think I started on Christmas day in 2019. I love to travel and I thought it would be a great project for me to work on. Well, 2020 happened, none of us are traveling anywhere. And so I sort of lost any energy to do this project because it just sort of made me sad knowing that there was this great world out there. And unfortunately I wasn't having the opportunity to visit it. I now, it is now my oldest whip. I had one that whip was old, that was older, but I finished it. So this is now my oldest project. I um, have made a decision that I try to work on it for about 30 minutes every morning. Um, it's the first stitching that I pick, pick up. If it fits in a challenge group and I have to do more, great. But if not, it's just something that I want to work on. Um, so this is, this is a uh, old world map. As you can see, I am working on the diagonal. This is also something I knew I tried when I was working with this. Um, this is just the very upper corner. Obviously, there's no map whatsoever um, in the picture yet. Um, this is just some of the figures that are in the top um, right-hand corner of the picture. And I made a decision. Um, I wanted to try something different on the diagonal. I think uh, many of you had, you know, many of you who do full coverage know about the, the issue with the lines that appear sometimes in full coverage. And so I decided to try it on the diagonal. I will continue to do this method, um, but I don't find it's the fastest method for me. Um, I find that um, that it, that even though, and this is so this piece is so confetti heavy that even though I'm not missing stitches, it just takes me a long. You know, I, I stitch for a while, and then you know I have to figure. I'm, I'm doing a lot of counting, and I don't find that it's the most useful method for me. However, I do want to continue it. I think part of having multiple projects ongoing is that it helps me um, sort of try different things and also keeps it interesting. Um, so that is my, my oldest whip. My second oldest whip is called um, Cats in the Toy Box. It's uh, a, hay, a, a, um, a hay design with the artwork by Leslie Ann Ivory. So here we go. Here is, um, here is the, the picture. It's not one I've seen much um, done over, uh, that I've seen many people do. Um, I don't know if it's still available or not. I probably purchased it for, in 2019. Um, so if you'll notice right here, um, there's a little piece of the basket um, that comes above the, uh, the top of the frame. And I'm pointing that out because it will give you a good sense of where I am on the project right now. So here is the project now. Let me get a little bit closer. Um, so this is, I initially had started this one in a diagonal as well. And I had to stop doing it that way. Um, it was just simply um, given all the, the vertical lines um, that were here, it just didn't make sense to do it with the diagonal anymore. And even though it might look like this is chunky stitching over here as well, it, it's very confetti heavy. Each of those like blue blobs have three or four shades of blue. The same with these sort of orange red things. There's lots of different ones. And it was just, it was getting to the point where I was just not enjoying it. So I decided just to do um, cross country. I more or less am following the page, but every now and then, um, you know, obviously I like, I like to finish if I have thread in my needle, I like to continue down and, and finish the thread off in the needle, which is why you see a lot of this here. It also allows me here, you can see the outline of an ear. There's actually some crinic in here, but you can kind of see the outline of a kitty head, although there's not much of the kitty there. Um, and the reason why I pointed out the basket, you can see it right here. Um, this is just a few stitches going into the, uh, the, the handle of the basket. And the reason why I point that out is that is about the midpoint of the pattern. So I'm getting close to the halfway point on the top page, on the, on the top row. I'm really excited about this. Um, this is, this is one of my focus pieces for 2021. I'm using it uh, for the Full Coverage Fanatics, which is a Facebook group. I am using it, they have what they call 21 and 21, which is they are challenging people to pick their own piece and stitch 21,000 stitches on it in 
2021. And that works out, I think, to about 1750 stitches a month. Um, for someone like me, that's fine. Again, I'm retired, we're in a pandemic, I'm not going out much, and so I have plenty of time to do the stitches. I've also started this using this for, um, they also have a tour around Iceland. I'm doing the easy version, which is 38. On that, in that challenge, you are not required to stitch um, on the same project. You can switch around, but I'm rather than you know switching every 84 stitches, I'm going to use the same project until I get to a point where I'm going to stop working on it. I am also using this for full coverage fanatic bingo, um, which is uh, something they have in they're, they're doing in January. And so. Uh, Okay, sorry, I wanted to dig out my uh, bingo board. So basically what uh, they have is they have, for those of you who are not familiar with the, uh, the bingo sal, basically the creators of Full Coverage Fanatics have come up with this bingo board. Um, there are 24 themes that you have, to, that if you choose to participate, that you can follow and in the middle is a free space, so uh, Stitcher's Choice, so you can choose what to stitch on whatever you want. Um, you can do a counting challenge, which is a thousand stitches per square, or you can do a non-counting challenge and then you sort of set what you want to do. I've made a decision, I'm doing the counting challenge and I'm, I'm only going for one, uh, one row, which in this case is a diagonal. Um, so for uh, three of them, I am doing, uh, I've used uh, Cats in the Toy Box and the, ch the prompts are um, design with uh, user design with more than 21 colors. Um, this is a Hade, so I think this one it's not a, a max color, but I think it has about uh, 89 colors or so in it. Um, Stitcher's Choice, I'm using it for that as well. And then there's also one that has um, Blanc or B or um, B5200, and this design does have that uh, in it. And so, in, um, in, in especially some of the cats, is when I get to them. So. This is a chance for me to focus on this. I'm very close to the 3,000 stitches. I have fewer than 100 in stitches before I get to 3,000. Um, and then I'll put it down for a while and focus on some of my other pieces. Um, so there's a couple others that I, I um, will be using to, to complete the other prompts. Um, so I'm also participating in um, WIPGO, which is um, a Facebook group that's managed by Jesse Marie Does Stuff. And basically WIPGO is works in progress go um, in honor of bingo and basically it's a chance to pick projects um, you, you you pick your own projects you set your own goals um, jesse marie um, every month draws two numbers and you work on the projects that are in those squares and again there's you're really challenging yourself and you're trying to see what you can accomplish so my two that were drawn for this month um one was uh, so this one mandala uh, uh, Mandala Giraffe um, by Awesome Pattern Studio. Um, this is a giveaway I won from uh, Aaron the Two Martini Stitcher, so thank you Aaron for that. Um, and so it was a mania start for me last year, um, but to be honest, after I started during mania, I put it down, again, height of the pandemic, and I was very busy with work, and so I didn't have a lot, uh, when I did stitching, I tended to go for things that were e that were sort of more comfort stitching for me, and a new project tends not to be comfort stitching. I love this pattern and I'm glad to have the opportunity. Um, my goal for almost all my WIPGO is a thousand stitches on the projects. There are a few exceptions. Um, but here is where I am now. So I've made, I've done some pretty good progress. Um, these are the eyes of the giraffe. Um, so I just sort of to give you a little bit, uh, but other than that, I think if I didn't tell you this was a giraffe, you wouldn't know what it is. Um, I've also used this for a couple of other other prompts. Um, so I am in the, I think as I mentioned, the magazine monthly challenge that is managed by um, Carolyn Zook and uh, Robin, and and so basically that is you pick a mag. Uh, it's the, the group is designed to encourage people to stitch more from their magazines, and so every month there is a theme. You pick a chart from one of your magazines that that meets that theme. And you stitch on it. They also have an acrostic where you know, they have a word. So this is January. The word for this month is affirm. And you somehow make all those letters um, fit your stitching. Not necessarily related to a magazine. You can have it um, be for something else. That is sort of the, the, the monthly activities in that group. However, they also this month have what they called a pop-up challenge. And it's called Bringo um, because it's so cold. And so they... 
Um, basically, it's, it's a little bit like WIPCO, but a little bit not. Um, so again, you, they have, there they had um, 25 prompts and you pick your own project and you set your own goal for each of those. Um, but the difference is that when you create your bingo board, um, you, I don't think I unfortunately have that one close to me, um, but when you have your bingo board, you write everything in, you know, so rather than just being one, two, three, four, five across and then go across again, that you basically, I used a, uh, I think a, a random number, random.org or something. And just so my first box might be number four, my second box might be number 23 and you just go on. And then every day, um, Carolyn draws a number, put, posts it on Facebook, and that is your prompt that theoretically you're supposed to stitch the next day, but really you have until the end of the month. And the goal of that is to see how many bingos um, can you get by the end of the month. Um, so, and I think it there it was that stitch either one hour or a hundred stitches on each of them. I've been pretty good about keeping up. There are a couple of them that I know I will not fulfill. One of them, for example, was a new start in a magazine that was not related to um, the monthly challenge. I did not do that one because I'm doing no new starts um, this year. And so I, as a result of that, uh, I'm not gonna get a blackout on my bingo board. I'm okay with that. This is all meant to be fun. And just give me, you know, pull up something that maybe otherwise I wouldn't have pulled up to work on this month. So my mandala giraffe was one that I've worked on several times um, for this challenge. Um, most recently, there was one about something that reminds you of your childhood. And I loved animals as a child. I was fascinated by them. I was fascinated by giraffes. And so that's why um, this reminded me of my childhood. Um, so I've been, I've been using that. Um, another... Uh, one that I have uh, for WIPCO is I'm using, uh, this is Al Forest, um, Swan Lake. Um, unfortunately, I got a lovely box and somehow the picture got ripped off the top of the front of the box. So this is just a printout that I did from, um, that I just pulled off the internet. Um, but this is Al Forest Embroidery Swan Lake. And I love this pattern. Um, and so this was a kit I got. So... This is kit uh, linen, it's sort of a gray linen, and the floss is all theirs as well. So this is, you can, as I said, these are a bunch of legs, you know, the dancer's legs, the ballerina legs, and her, her tutu, and then part of their torsos. Um, I love this pattern. I do find the linen a little bit difficult to stitch on um, because it is so uneven. So even though it's 32 count, I do use a magnifier um, when I'm stitching on this, but I absolutely love it. Um, and the variegation, the floss, so the white obviously doesn't have much variegation, but they're like, and you can see this in the pants legs. They're absolutely, it's, I, I love the, all the variegation. This is one skein of, I mean, more than one strand, but all from the same color of floss. And you can see the variegation. It's absolutely lovely. Um, so again, I've been using that primarily for whip go. My goal is to get a thousand stitches, but also it has met a couple of the prompts on on um, the magazine monthly challenge bringo. So other pieces that I have been working on. Um, so for the magazine monthly challenge, my um, piece that I chose to do this month is um, is something called Sister Bears. Um, I have a lot of, again, because I, I um, was stitching in the late 80s, early 90s when I picked it back up, I got a lot of subscriptions. So I have a lot of what I call vintage patterns. Um, so this is one, um, this is from uh, cross stitch and country crafts um, from uh, I think it's 1995 one of their issues and they had a whole uh, it must be the January February one so they had a whole series of like bears so this was they called these sister bears um, and it's just a sweet little pattern it's relatively small um, something that you know I know we all like to say oh I can knock that out really quickly bigger than you think and it also has back stitching it is from the 1990s um, so the theme for this month was New Year. I didn't really have anything that fit that. So I um, just picked a pattern from a January um, issue. Um, so here is what all I have now. So this is just the hat on the bigger bear and a little bit of her um, her head, but there's really not much there. Um, again, this is, I'm using this both for my main theme of the month. I'm also in a group called Letters of the Month on Facebook which basically, um, it's, a, it's a relatively small group and the challenge is to come up with as many 
Um, you know, that you go through the alphabet um, and you do two a month, acknowledging there are two letters that you won't be able to do, your choice of which letters you don't do. And you, you, it has to either be in the name of the pattern as a first letter of one of the words or a major motif on, on the pattern. And so um, I picked this one for, I, I picked, uh, again, this one, which is uh, called Caroline and Emma, Sister Bears, um, because be bear. Um, another project uh, that I also am doing, I started this uh, last year for the Magazine Monthly Challenge, um, something that reminds you of fall. It's called Apple Sampler. I've made a decision. I cut out these apples and their names here. Um, one, because I just thought if you're going to pick apples, why did you pick those apples? They're not the most common ones. Um, and secondly, they don't look like they're very tasty apples. Um, they look like uh, they've been I don't know, just sitting around, not very not very good looking to eat. So I had started stitching them. I was originally just going to do it without the words. And then I started stitching them and I realized I just didn't like the way they looked. And so I just, I made a decision I'll pull them out. So I just brought the, the tree down a little bit more. So here's where I am now. This is something called apple sampler. Um, I am I, it's another one of these I feel like I'm getting so close to being done but I have not even started the back stitching and then I also haven't really done um, the border which will be very simple when I start to do it because it's just a geometric pattern um, I am also using this for um, um, for the letters of the month a apple sampler um, and so I'm hoping they'll be able to make some good progress on there letter of the month you set your own goals um, for all of mine, I said 500 stitches. So I'm very close to my 500 stitches on this. On Sister Bears, um, I need a little bit more. So those are the uh, major projects that I have uh, been working on. Again, I have 41 whips. Um, whip is a work in project progress. I have 41. I'm not going to show all of them to you, to you today. Uh, my plans going forward are um, to continue to work on my whip go pieces um, as well as to keep up with the uh, bringo um, so that I can make sure that I can get I'm not going to get the block out but I'm hoping to get at least 23 of 25. I am also participating in um, No New Starch which is a Facebook group that group is now closed um, but uh, the main, main goal of that is to keep us all um, working on our projects and not starting new things but they also have their own little challenges and so i'm um, also right now they are doing they are doing um they're they're following all of the zodiac signs and so i'm not, i don't know much about ast astrology but uh, i am using my both my map and my cats in the toy box um, to fulfill one of the prompts that finishes with that one um is finishes in the next couple of days and then we'll start Aquarius. I don't know the prompts for that. These are totally optional to participate in. The main point of the group is to cheer each other on, to work on what we have, and not to start new things. And at 41 projects, I have plenty to keep going. Um, I do want to show you two projects that I plan to focus on a little bit more um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, one of them is White Owl. Um, this is an artistry project, um, uh, artwork by... Um, Koyomi Harai. Um, when I saw someone had stitched this, it was absolutely beautiful. Again, it has the owl, which I love. It has blue, which I love. And it just, I think it will look absolutely stunning when it is all stitched up. Um, and so I am not that far. Um, this is, I, I'm really just sort of on the second page, um, but you can, you know, already you can see sort of the wings of the bird um, coming in. Um, one of the reasons why I'm going to focus on this um, one is that I've used it for a lot of prompts in the Bringo Challenge. Um, I have a chance to stitch in my favorite color. It has um, flowers as one of the prompts, and so I'm really looking forward to um, continuing on that. Um, also, it meets one of the squares in the Full Coverage Fanatics. Um, Full Coverage Fanatics their bingo challenge um, to stitch on a bird and obviously now is a bird so I need to get a thousand stitches on that so I have fewer than 100 stitches to go before I get to my 3,000 on cats in the box and then I'll pick this one up and work on this one for a while um, and then lastly in order to complete the full coverage fanatics challenge um, on the, the, the bingo for the one diagonal one of it is the uh, your full coverage project product project that you are closest to being done 
Um, so this is Artisee's uh, The Green Dancer, which is artwork by um, Edgar uh, Degas. And so I, again, I really, really love this picture and the colors in it. Um, this is a relatively small project, um, even though it's full coverage. Uh, it is, um, I think, 138 or 130 by 250 stitches. So it is relatively small compared to some of my other full coverages. And so you'll, that's why, even though it doesn't look like I have that much done, it is my closest to being finished um, because it's just so much smaller than all the others. So here is where I am now. I'm on page, I'm you know, getting towards the end of you know, page two. Um, of course, it's called Green Dancer. I've got multiple orange dancers done, but not the green ones. Um, but then I'll start working on filling on them. And again, I need to do a thousand stitches in this um, in order to get to, um, to fill in the box for um, the full coverage Fanatics Bingo. Um, other few plans I have, um, I'm also following what Erin the Two Martini Stitcher does, and I like to stitch on projects when they are, when it's their birthday. So both uh, um, this month, I, I used the Cats in the Toy Box because it had its birthday uh, on January 1st. It was my New Year's start last year as well as um, uh, old, old World Map had its birthday on Christmas Day. Um, and so that was uh, that. I have on, uh, on January 20th, I had started um, something from Artisee, I don't have it right here, called uh, High Intensity, um, which is a, a picture of a Jaguar. I'll stitch on that um, for its birthday. And I also planned to uh, join the Sal um, for January 20th. Um, I'm stitching on Oh Joyous Day, um, a Black by Blackbird design um, in honor of the inauguration in the United States. I'm very much looking forward to that day. And I also am participating in, in the Let Freedom Ring Sal um, by Lila Studio. So unfortunately, my first floss tube, I didn't manage to get everything in front of me that I wanted to. Um, but I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, please feel free to uh, have any questions or comments down below. Um, also, if you find that this is interesting, please hit the subscribe button. I can also be found on Instagram as Owl Invader Stitcher. Um, so thank you for your time today, and I probably will be recording every couple of weeks. Thank you and have a good day.